Hello and welcome back to my blog, <clears throat> Essays on the Constitution of the United States, Part 17, <clears throat> Agrippa 10, Part 2, which is the resolve to be submitted. Commonwealth of Massachusetts resolved that the form of government lately proposed by a federal convention held in the city of Philadelphia is so far injurious to the interests of this commonwealth that we are constrained by fidelity to our constituents to reject it. And we do hereby reject the said proposed form and every part thereof. But in order that the union of these states may, as far as possible, be promoted, and the federal business as little obstructed as may be, we do agree on the part of this commonwealth that the following addition be made to the present Articles of Confederation. 14. The United States shall have power to regulate the intercourse between these states and foreign dominions under the following restrictions, viz. First, no treaty, ordinance, or law shall alienate the whole or part of any state without the consent of the legislature of such state. Second, the United States shall not, by treaty or otherwise, give a preference to the ports of one state over those of another, nor, third, create any monopolies or exclusive companies, nor, fourth, extend the privileges of citizenship to any foreigner. And for the more convenient exercise of the powers hereby, and by the former articles given, the United States shall have authority to constitute judicatories, whether supreme or subordinate, with power to try all piracies and felonies done on the high seas, and also all civil causes in which a foreign state or subject thereof, actually resident in a foreign country and not being British absentees, shall be one of the parties. They shall also have authority to try all causes in which ambassadors shall be concerned. All these trials shall be by jury and in some seaport town. All imposts levied by Congress on trade shall be confined to foreign produce or foreign manufactures imported, and to foreign ships trading in our harbors, and all their absolute prohibitions shall be confined to the same articles. All imposts and confiscation, confiscations shall be to the use of the state in which they shall accrue, excepting in such branches as shall be assigned by any state as a fund for defraying their proportion of the continental. And no power shall be exercised by Congress but such as are expressly given by this and the former articles. And we hereby authorize our delegates in Congress to sign and ratify an article in the foregoing form and words without any further act of this state for that purpose, provided the other states shall accede to this proposition on their part or on or before the first day of January, which will be in the year of our Lord, 1790. All matters of revenue being under the control of the legislature, we recommend to the general court of this commonwealth to devise, as early as may be, such funds arising from such branches of foreign commerce as shall be equal to our part of the current charges of the continent, and to put Congress in possession of the revenue arising therefrom with a right to collect it during such term as shall appear to be necessary for the payment of the principal of their debt by the sale of the western lands. By such an explicit declaration of the powers given to Congress, we shall provide for all federal purposes, and shall at the same time secure our rights. It is easier to amend the old confederation, defective as it has been represented, than it is to correct the new form, for with whatever view it was framed, Truth constrains me to say that it is insidious in its form and ruinous in its tendency. Under the pretense of different branches of the legislature, the members will in fact be chosen from the same general description of citizens. The advantages of a check will be lost while we shall be continually exposed to the cabals and corruption of a British election. There cannot be a more eligible mode than the present for appointing members of Congress, nor more effectual checks provided than our separate state governments, nor any system so little expensive in case of our adopting the resolve just stated, or even continuing as we are. We shall in that case avoid all the inconvenience of concurrent jurisdictions. 
We shall avoid the expensive and useless establishments of the Philadelphia Proposition. We shall preserve our Constitution and liberty, and we shall provide for all such institutions as will be useful. Surely, then, you cannot hesitate whether you will choose freedom or servitude. The object is now well defined. By adopting the form proposed by the Convention, you will have the derision of foreigners, internal misery, and the anathemas of posterity. By amending the present Confederation and granting limited powers to Congress, you secure the admiration of strangers, internal happiness, and the blessings and prosperity of all succeeding generations. Be wise, then, and by preserving your freedom, prove that heaven bestowed it not in vain. Many will be the efforts to delude the convention. The mode of judging is itself suspicious as being contrary to the ancient and established usage of the commonwealth. But since the mode is adopted, we trust that the members of that venerable assembly will not so much regard the greatness of their power as the sense and interest of their constituents. And they will do well to remember that even a mistake in adopting it will be destructive while no evils can arise from a total, and much less probably from such a partial rejection as we have proposed. I have now gone through my reasonings on this momentous subject and have stated the facts and deductions from them, which you will verify for yourselves. Personal interest was not my object, or I should have pursued a different line of conduct. Though I conceived that a man who owes allegiance to the state is bound on all important occasions to propose such inquiries as tend to promote the public good, yet I did not imagine it to be any part of my duty to present myself to the fury of those who appear to have other ends in view. For this cause and for this only, I have chosen a feigned signature. At present, all the reports concerning the writer of these papers are merely conjectural. I should have been ashamed of my system if it had needed such feeble support as the character of individuals. It stands on the firm ground of the experience of mankind. I cannot conclude this long disquisition better than with a caution derived from the words of inspiration. Discern the things of your peace now in the days thereof, before they be hidden from your eyes. Agrippa. I don't know what would have happened if we would have stayed under the Articles of Confederation, but his uh, prescience sure shone through there in that we have become a despotic government. Make it a great day, and bye for now.